Today's guest is Don Arkoski, who is a professional event and portrait photographer from Pittsburgh, and he is a survivor of childhood abuse and neglect, who was recently diagnosed with ADHD and has been working through these issues while dealing with the pandemic-related revenue losses, and uh, basically right now is in this position to rebuild his business and take it further than it's ever been. So Don, thank you very much for being on. How are you doing today? doing wonderful today thank you for having me I, I really appreciate what you're doing this is this is really good stuff you're very welcome and uh yeah definitely uh this is something that we can dive into because i think there's going to be a lot of different layers uh they're going to surface uh and be valuable for other people to hear as well so why don't you just give us a little context on you know how you got to doing what you're doing uh with regards to the photography and where you're at now kind of floor is yours for all of that Sure. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I took a photography class in high school, really enjoyed it. Um, I uh, have ADHD, so neurodivergent, but I was not diagnosed until uh, just a few years ago. So um, undiagnosed neurodivergent. Uh, my mom said, you have to go to college or find something to do with yourself. Uh, and I was like, ah, I like photography. I'll just go do that. Um, so it was really on a whim but uh, uh, I did it and um, worked for a number of other photographers as well as some day jobs uh, for a number of years, um, then struck out on my own in 2007, which was huge for me uh, because working for other people and the, the little idiosyncratic stuff that you deal with, with you know, being some, somebody's employee, um, drove me nuts. <laughs> I never really knew why, uh, <laughs> but it makes a lot more sense now understanding more about how my brain works. So um, yeah, 2007 struck out on my own. Um, I briefly got roped into, again, neurodivergent, got roped into some community development work um, before the pandemic and uh, ran a, a, a community economic development nonprofit for four years. Uh, while trying to juggle my business um, and transition that organization from having a staff of three to having no staff. Uh, uh, it was a whole big thing. But um, then uh, I, I had some questions about what I wanted to do after that because I really enjoyed some aspects of that. Uh, I was with a lot of people. There was always something. Um, it was a very chaotic time, which, you know, in, in a way spoke to me given my my childhood traumas and things. Um, so um, I was kind of, kind of tossing up, you know, whether I should continue being a photographer, whether I should go deeper into that. Um, got a divorce <laughs> in the middle of that. Um, <laughs> started dating, uh, found a, a really awesome uh, woman who is uh, now my, my wife. Um, and I had a stopgap job as you sometimes do, um, when you're going through a divorce, needed health insurance. And when the pandemic struck, they laid me off. She was like, why don't you do what you do best and do photography? Like that's, you know, that's what you do. And I, um, I have, uh, well, you know, prior to the, prior to the pandemic, prior to, to the economic development stuff. I made okay money at it, but, um, but it wasn't, it, it never, it never hit that next level. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, I, again, I was married at the time we were making combined, making enough money that it didn't, I didn't really need to push myself. Um, but obviously as an event photographer, primarily <laughs> the pandemic was not the best time to jump back into it. Um, I also teach photography, so that was hugely helpful. And I was already teaching some classes before that. We just transitioned to online teaching. Um, and uh, now things are starting to pick back up. And of course, some portraits here, here and there um, still happened during the, during the pandemic. So um, yeah, but I'm, I'm ready to, to kick it off. Plus my, my wife is um, finishing her dissertation. So though I've been in Pittsburgh for oh, 20 years, uh, 25 years, um, 
uh, I don't know after next year where I'll be. <laughs> so I really need to be able to, if it, you know, it, most likely we're not going to be in Pittsburgh. So I need to be able to hit the ground running where, uh, where I set up shop next. So that's where I'm at. Got it. So kind of this winding story of like a lot of different things happening fairly close together to really kind of spur a, a brand new awakening of a, of a whole bunch of different things, reveal things that were, you know, blind spots before that that's kind of what it seems like overall. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And with, um, you know, with my, um, marriage that I, that I'm in, um, uh, started to explore a lot of uh, my childhood trauma, got diagnosed with ADHD, you know, so lots, lots and lots of stuff <laughs> happening really. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to, trying to contain it all and direct it all and stay on top of it. Got it. So if you switch gears and focus specifically on the business, so what is it that you are experiencing as a challenge or ceiling right now uh, in your own words? Um, <clears throat> I realized um, probably, probably middle of 2021 that uh, I had pretty low self-esteem. So um, I was willing to virtually give my work away, right? Um, I realized more recently, thanks to some therapy, um, that uh, not only that, but because of the trauma that I had experienced, the idea of somebody being upset was, you know, it turned me into a people pleaser, right? So, um, so a lot of what I was dealing with in terms of lack of success, um, I'm, I'm starting to see is, is, a, is a need to set good boundaries. Um, which has helped me to see the other issues, right? Uh, like the fact that, so that's, that's sort of where that, you know, that, that uh, self-sabotage kind of stuff <laughs> came in for me. But, um, but in addition to that, it's helped me see, um, it, it's really helped me see that some of the things I was doing were not, um, were not what people were looking for. If that makes sense, right? So, um, in terms of my marketing, in terms of um, it, yeah, mostly my marketing. So, and even now, like I, because I'm a photography teacher, uh, that's that's what's bringing most of my web traffic, right? Is photography classes. So, um, but I think too because of the ADHD and, and this other stuff that I'm discovering, I think um, behavioral, you know, patterns and, and, and things like that are, uh, are in my way. And I'm trying to work through that stuff as well. So. Got it. So clearly there's a lot of, you know, self-awareness that you've gained through this process of, you know, going through the therapy and, and facing up to all of that. And as I told you at the beginning, I acknowledge you for that because it's it's never a fun path. Um, so yeah, definitely that needs to, you know, be brought up. Um, you had mentioned also the uh, teaching, right, of the photography as well as the photography itself. So if you were to just get more specific, like what is kind of present day, the, the biggest challenge you're experiencing in the business? Um, my biggest challenge right now is, is generating revenue. Um, the events are starting to come back. I'm seeing more and more events. Uh, but um, again, on the teaching side of things, I'm getting tons of, tons of traffic. So, uh, and, and, and picking up tons of students. But in terms of the event stuff, I'm not really um, seeing my full potential in terms of, you know, landing, landing this work. So, uh, and I've tried to do stuff in terms of my, you know, you know, in terms of my marketing, tried to change things around there and, and some things work, you know, you know how it is. Some things work, some things don't work. So, um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, and, and I think, um, 
I think there's also probably, um, because there's so much stuff that I'm working on, uh, on the personal side of things, that, um, that in terms of the amount of focus and attention I can pay to, to my business, uh, I haven't had as much of a focus as I should, essentially. Got it. So there's a bit of other things are taking up my actual time. So I'm not able to actually focus in on the business. Okay. Got it. And just taking some notes on here. Um, so and there's probably, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. There's, there's, um, I would say there's also still some, it, not that I have low self-esteem any longer, but, um, but there's probably, uh, I don't want to, I mean, I've been doing this for so long, but it's, so it feels weird to call it imposter syndrome, but <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that feeling of like, uh, am I, am I really, um, the person to do this or am I, uh, you know, deserving of, you know, that, that sort of stuff. Right. So. So in that instance, am I deserving uh, of what specifically? Uh, success, I guess, right? Um, deserving of a particular job or um, you know, clients or, or whatnot, so. Got it. So in that instance, like, am I deserving of success? Am I deserving a particular job or client? does that thought come up after you actually get the job or even before you get the job? It depends. Um, I think it can surface at any time. <laughs> so uh, there are times when I'm on a job um, The being an event photographer, there are, um, you know, super, like super big name clients that, um, that, that whole host an event and, and uh, Western Pennsylvania is full of a number of really amazing um, spots, uh, both inside Pittsburgh and, and out in the mountains that um, there's a lot of uh, like corporate events that happen at some of these like resorts and things, um, <clears throat> you know, and so in terms of um, uh, like, is like, <clears throat> um, in terms of some of those, those clients at some of those resorts, you know, it's always a, a question for me of, do I belong here? I guess, um, you know, I, I again, I was uh, experienced a bunch of childhood trauma. I, as a result of that, I, um, it took me five years to finish high school. Um, I have an associate's degree. Again, I undiagnosed. ADHD and I spent eight years in school. I got the associate's degree in the first two, <laughs> but, but beyond that, I kept going and kept trying and uh, just could not concentrate, right? So, um, and there is, there is a bit of, um, you know, there's, there's a, 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 we call it discrimination, because it's, but maybe that's what it is, educational discrimination, right? So, um, and, you know, so there's, I think there's some things like that that I probably internalize and and, um, and they stand in the way. They make me think, whoa, this client is, you know, this um, billions and billions of dollar uh, firm, right? Like if I, they're, and they're really trusting me to do this job. And uh, event photography, photography in general, it's a trade. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a little more creative than plumbing, right? <laughs> but uh, but at the end of the day, you can learn plumbing, you can learn electrical, you can learn photography. Um, again, the creative side is uh, is a little a little different, but um, but in terms of getting a good exposure, the, the 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 type of work that someone needs from covering of a corporate event is not, you know, we're not talking about fine art photography, right? So. Um, and that can that can be learned relatively quickly. So it's it's this is all internal. It's not like I shouldn't have, uh, you know, I shouldn't have this barrier to this because again, it's not really it's not a skill issue, right? Does that make sense? Um, 
I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. <laughs> what I would dive a bit deeper into it. So there's this one element where it's like, okay, am I really like these people are really trusting me to do this job. And the skill that I have of taking these nice pictures, I mean, whatever, it's kind of like the, this, like almost non-skill that I do possess. I can teach other people, but like, it's not really that big of a deal. There's almost like a discounting of the actual craft of what you do. So mm -hmm. does that resonate with you? Um, I think, yeah, probably. But again, that's, that's mostly because the, um, I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Um, I, um, it is second nature to me, essentially. So, um, I understand it, it is something that, that does take skill, you know what I mean? But in terms of what I'm delivering to say a corporate client, uh, or a nonprofit, um, and I'm not saying they're not happy. They're very, my clients are very happy with what they get, but again, I'm not, you know, I'm not creating uh, fine art. In, the, in those instances, I'm not, or even, uh, you know, like a, some sort of amazing advertisement, you know what I mean? Like I'm not winning an Addy award. <laughs> so, um, so what I, what, what uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to um, uh, talk down my own ability and my own skill, but in terms of those, those particular jobs, I think um, that the, the work itself is just not really. Not really fully um, you know, creative, as creative as it could be. So. Got it. And what does that mean about you? If the work isn't as creative or as significant as like creating fine art or amazing ads? Um, that's a good question, especially because I, in terms of creating fine art, I think um, I, I, a lot of the people I teach photography to are artists, right? So um, they're people that uh, are hobby artists, right? They want to they want to do this because it's something that, that makes them feel a certain way, right? And sorry, they're I'm not, just gonna pause you right there, not because yeah. I don't think this is relevant, just because I, I found it interesting. Because the question was like, well, what does it mean about me? Yeah, and I'm talking about other. Yeah, correct people, right like i go yeah. into the fine art and what i teach and, and yeah. other people right so what does it mean about you specifically that you are doing work that's not rewarding <laughs> well okay the work that's not rewarding yes yeah um well you know it, it's uh yeah it gets the uh, the bills paid um uh that's number one um two i think there probably is uh this is all sort of um, based in that fear of, of, uh, of what that next level is, right? So I, I know these people, these corporate folks, I, I can deliver, make them really happy. Um, it's super easy stuff to do in terms of photography. Um, and even like family portraits, for example, like I, you know, um, I can make a family happy, they'll, they, they'll, tell me how much they love the work. They come back to me a year later, but, um, but it's not really, yeah, it's not, it's not really fulfilling me, I guess, um, in the way that that's something more challenging could, but that's something more challenging is also scary, right? Cause what if I, uh, what if I screw up? Okay. So one second. So basically it's not as fulfilling as something more challenging and to do something that's more challenging. And I would actually add the nuance to it. And you can correct me if this resonates or not, but not saying to say that's maybe more challenging because it seems like you have this deep reservoir of experience, but more scary in terms of it being an authentic expression of what you actually want to do. Yeah, Would that fair. be accurate? Yeah. yeah okay. I think so. so that expression, that authenticity, what is so scary about it? 
<clears throat> That's a great question. Um, I think that probably relates to uh, the people pleasing stuff that, uh, that I mentioned, right? Um, and um, probably um, still some residual self-esteem stuff, I would assume, um, in terms of in terms of uh, a fear of, of, of showing people who my authentic self is, I guess. So I think because when I've, when I've given people a glimpse of that in the past, whether it was my previous wife <laughs> or, um, you know, uh, the teachers, or the employers, that sometimes there's, there's, I have a goofy sense of humor. Um, uh, I'm a bit of an absurdist. So, um, it, uh, I would love to actually find a, a place to make that, that stuff fit and be authentic, right? But um, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know where to find that, where to find that work, I guess. Okay, so the sentiment of uh, it's scary to authentically express. Well, number one, is that the wording that you would use or like how would you word it if you had to summarize that overall fear? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty accurate to, to how I would summarize it because, um, you know, at the, as an event photographer, I'm often around either people that um, are executives or uh, people with a, a lot of wealth, right? Um, I, I grew up middle class um, but you know, my, my mom had a really great job essentially, um, for a number of years. Um, but I mean, we weren't, we weren't wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so there's, there's a bit of a disconnect, like a class disconnect there oftentimes, or, uh, cause I do, I don't do a lot of weddings, but I do some weddings, um, where, you know, whether the, the, the folks are just, you know, just cultural differences between me and them or, or uh, differences of values, right? Um, I try to uh, be selective about my clientele to some degree, but, um, but there are times when, you know, things come up and it's, it's good money, so I'll take the job. Uh, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not doing anything that, that goes directly against my values or anything like that, but, um, but just not people that I completely connect with. Right. So I can't be okay. too goofy and, 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 and things at a, uh, you know, stuffy corporate event, wherever it's in suits. Right. So. Got it. So there's a level of like professionalism and maybe an expectation that as a photographer, I should kind of be, you know, seen not heard or you know whatever the, the the other kind of narrative is you should be kind of in the background just snapping pictures so you know i understand yeah. the kind of implications or, or the context of that um but this sentiment that like it's scary to be authentically expressed are you okay if we dive deeper into that yeah honestly i'd love to that sounds okay that sounds like something that I, because again this is not something that's that's not something that i had thought about until just started on that. So yeah. Okay. Let's, Fair let's enough. Let's do it. All right. Perfect. So in that case, when you look at like it is scary to be authentically expressed, what is like what do you believe is the source of that particular sentiment? Um I think I, I mean, from an early age, you know, I, um, I did things um, my own way, right? Um, and, but I, at the same time, I saw, like, uh, there was a kid in kindergarten, and I mean, I'm, I'm 43 years old, so there's a kid in kindergarten who, who's a boy who put on the, the dress up dresses, which of course were for, for girls, right? Um, and he would dump paste all over his hands and peel it off, and, you know, and I saw like how they were like, oh, no, this, that kid is weird, right? He's, he's different. He's weird. Like, you don't want to be weird. Um, <clears throat> but in my soul, I am weird. <laughs> so, and I think we all are, right? Um, a number of years ago, 
I had a friend that had a, a baby and I spent a good bit of time with them and, you know, uh, I would go to Target with them and you know, the little toddler would like dance around and have a good time and sing whatever was on the, uh, you know, the, the music that was on at Target. And that, that like cutting loose, I recognized like a lot of people didn't do that, especially a lot of men don't do that, right? Just like, you know, act goofy in the middle of Target because there's this social expectation, right? So, um, and I do, <laughs> when, when those things start to slip a little bit uh, at an event, sometimes I get some, some funny looks and, uh, you know, so I, I, I feel like, um, that I'm, I'm reminded of that childhood, like, oh, don't be the weirdo, <laughs> right. Kind of thing. So. Got it. So in that instance, the weird kid, or, and I've, I've been using the word weird in quotation marks, cause that's how sure. you described it. Obviously I wasn't there. Um, so this was, I saw this kid who was essentially expressing himself in a non-typical way. Everybody sure. else started to make fun of him. And that was kind of the impetus for you to be like, Ooh, like, don't do that because then I'm going to get laughed at. Is that accurate? I, I would say the thing was like, he wasn't really laughed at and made fun of by the other students. Other people weren't, weren't doing the same thing he was doing, but it was more, teachers, parents, like that was definitely something with my parents, like, don't be the weirdo, right? And I was the weirdo. So it was really, that was hard for me, uh, personally. So, um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I think um, who my authentic self is and who I would like to express, um, I was, I was told um, to shove that down and that continued into my adult life like my my ex-wife um we had a two-bedroom place when we were both in college in the second bedroom there was a, a a bed in there so somebody you know spent the night but but it was also it worked as, as my office and she called it the ugly room because i could put whatever i wanted in there any sort of goofy stuff you know like a doctor who um, cookie jar or whatever, you know, whatever it might be. Um, that was fine because it was relegated to there where no one had to see it. It was the ugly room, right? So that sort of, that, um, um, you know, clued me into, you know, even as an adult that, that there are judgmental people and they're going to say things and they're going to, you know, in certain ways. Even people that, uh, again, this was a person I was married to, the you know, person that I uh, had a long-term relationship with. We were together for over 15 years. So, Got it. So as an aside, would you also say that, uh, like, would you describe yourself as somebody who is like a sensitive person? I would say so. I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it was easy for you to pick up on like the subtleties of Okay, so like this is kind of the energy in the room. They think this is weird. I shouldn't act this way. They're uncomfortable if I'm goofy. This is how they react. Like that would have been a normal experience for you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that that's uh, based on my trauma. Yeah, yeah. Okay. From childhood. Got yeah. it. So, if we just kind of look at those memories or, or these stories, right? So you got the the weird kid in class who, you know was getting judged by the elders that definitely you wanted approval from right since the the, the people sure. pleasing bit um and then that being reinforced through various different times with so the the ugly room or being told don't be weird mm -hmm. if you look at those stories in total if you were to separate the fact from like your experience of it factually what happened in all of those instances um actually like, what happened let's just say with the weird kid in class like what were the facts of that situation um well the fact like you said he was expressing himself and and again in a perfectly normal your own way. He's a kid. Like kids, kids play with what they want to play with, right? So, um, but um, 
yeah but the the um the teachers the teachers aid parents um they uh authority figures right um wanted him to conform to a certain so Sorry. and I just pause right there, right? They wanted sure. him to conform. Right. I, I could argue that's interpretation because we don't actually know what these like. Maybe they wanted him to conform. Maybe they wanted him to be quiet. Maybe they wanted him to make them feel comfortable. Like there's a lot of different interpretations of what they could have wanted. So what were the facts of that situation? Like bare bones. If I had to draw a comic book, like slice or storyboard of that event, what are the facts that can actually be seen from the outside? Um, this kid put on dresses, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. poured, poured, uh, paste on himself, um, on his hands so that he could, uh, peel it up like, you know, dry skin or whatever. Um, and then the authority figures, um, told him not to do that. Okay. So he put on dresses poured paste and an authority figure said don't do that like factually if you were to draw yeah. that that would describe the scene i would add in the the reason that i said conformity was i would add that they that they told him to play with boys toys so okay perfect so they said uh, the words play with the boys toys right those are the words that came out of their mouth you could draw that on a comic book strip right. that that factually that's what happened Okay, perfect. And to you, the truth of that moment, looking back on it or in that time was, okay, it's not safe to be weird or goofy or outside of the norm. Does that mm -hmm. feel true for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So if you could travel back in time and witness that situation as your adult self, talking to your younger self, are there alternative interpretations of the facts that you could pass on to your younger self? Like what are the um, alternative interpretations of those facts? So I don't know, <laughs> but I do know, uh, like I obviously these teachers, they cared a lot about the kids. I know it was coming from a place of love, right? Okay, um, so just pause but, right there, right? Because initially yeah. it's like, I don't know. But now it's like, initially it was, they want him to conform. Now it's, well, one possible interpretation is they're coming out of love, okay? Right. And so if you continue that as interpretation. Um, yeah, uh, so, because uh, again, they, they, they cared about, they cared about the kids, right? And the parents, def the parents definitely cared about their kids and, and they weren't, you know, um, but um, I think what I, what I would say to myself, I guess, as the, as the- Well, don't worry about that, but let's just stick to the alternative interpretations, right? So one, as you said, okay, yeah. they cared about the kids and sure. this is how they knew to express that care. Whether it was good right. or bad, irrelevant, but right. one other interpretation is they, they cared. This is how they chose to express that caring, mm -hmm. right? And just for the sake of example, um, are you okay if I throw out other ones? Okay. Sure, sure. So, you know, another one could have been that behavior made them uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they tried to stuff it down so that they would feel less comfortable maybe they weren't educated enough to know how to deal with an outlier, right? In terms of all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then bringing it back to you, right? Cause you, your truth was that you concluded this was weird. Like maybe other people get reprimanded for being weird. It doesn't mean that I have to. Um, that makes sense in that one instance <laughs> but being being that that was reinforced over and over to me i think is uh, is probably the issue there a hundred percent and i'm not discounting that so what i'm more getting at is if we just isolate that one moment 
sure. in time. Cumulatively, we came up with four or five different interpretations of what could have happened based on the facts. Is mm -hmm. that accurate for you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if four or five different interpretations were possible based on what factually happened at that time, the one that you ended up choosing, unconsciously or not, for whatever the reason, doesn't matter, the truth of that moment for you, out of all the possible interpretations, was like it's unsafe to authentically express. It's scary to authentically express. Is that actually something that you saw in that moment? Or was that just an interpretation of the facts? Oh, I definitely think it's just an interpretation of the facts. Like, um, but, but, it, but that's, again, based on uh, a lot of other experiences since then. Right. And that's, yeah, the ones that reinforce that original belief, right? Right. And definitely there's, there's a lot of value in going back through all the other ones. And that's going to be, you know, outside the scope of what we can do sure, here sure. today. But what I just want to bring to your attention and illuminate some awareness is like, you made a conclusion that was extremely logical, given where you were in your life. Looking back on it right now, that was only one of many interpretations which you yourself have said, well, I didn't really see that it's not safe to authentically express. I actually just kind of heard it being reinforced multiple times. Right. So how does that land for you? Um, I think I see where you're driving at with it, but I still I think that's such a deep, uh, you know, such a deep um uh, belief for me, the, this, uh, this issue with, um, expressing authenticity. hundred percent. And yeah. I think that's a great observation as well, because it speaks to some of these things that like, like the core wounding was, it is safe. It is not like it is scary or unsafe to authentically express the ripple kind of survival strategy beliefs that formed at every different instances in your life to support that are also the scaffolding that currently keep that up right so it's the ugly room in my like ex marriage it is the constant hearing of it and probably you know school social events whatever whatever uh in other instances like the, all, those are all the ripple sub beliefs that reinforce the core one that all drive the scaffolding and put together the foundation of this one core you could say misinterpretation i don't say that to discount your experience it's extremely valid but if you yourself said well like yeah though those are all different interpretations that could have happened it opens up the dialogue for you and the invitation for you to really explore. If I didn't really see in that moment, it's scary to be authentically expressed. Did I also not see it in all of the other instances? Um, yeah, I think that's a huge challenge because thinking about just one other, um, uh, trying to make it fast, uh, one other, uh, a situation when I was uh, 12, I had a relative who um, kind of clunkily attempted to come out um, and she presented letters that she was in college, letters that a roommate gave. This was like the early 90s um, or, or a, somebody in her friend circle gave to her professing her love for her and um, everyone in the family was like, well, haha, -ha, you're in college. This is time to experiment, right? You know, and made a lot of jokes about it. Um, clearly came at it from a homophobic standpoint. And um, at the end of the day, it took another more than a decade for her to, to come out. So again, I understand that that came from a place of, of fear for them potentially, or, you know, and again, it wasn't that they didn't love her. 
Um, but, um, but it again told me like, here's something that socially is, is, is looked at negatively or frowned upon or is different, whatever. Um, and therefore, you know, she was, and I, and again, in the moment, I didn't think about those things. I was, you know, 12, I was playing with my Game Boy, but, <laughs> but it was, you know, it's, it was, it's one of those things that is, is fed into this. Now, um, granted, she's out and happy now, but, uh, you know, like that stuff is, uh, like I said, it took it more than a decade. 100%. And a great example of how, like, here's another story and happening and occurrence that reinforces right. that original wounding, right? To just kind of sum it up, because again, I, the, the, there's a lot of layers to this, right? So there's, anyway, to, just to kind of bring it to a close, many of the instances that you described, not all, but many, especially in, in this you know, conversation, were external circumstances on other people that through my sensitivity and also the lens, so this is like another layer to it, but the lens that, right, like nobody can like nobody can be upset and that's kind of the, the people pleasing aspect. So if I look at these experiences through that lens, like that I have to make sure that nobody's upset when other people authentically express, it makes everybody upset or they hide it, they, they suppress it, they, they don't want to deal with it, right? And I am interpreting my worldview based off of the experiences of others and another potentially false conclusion, which is that like, I can't make anybody upset. So how does all of that land for you? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think I have to think about that one <laughs> sure. quite, quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I, I want to, uh, yeah, really, um, really think about that one for a while. But um, I think, yeah, um, I, well, I mean, you know, we're talking about business, right? So um, I, I don't want to upset clients. Um, I don't want, uh, you know, negative Yelp reviews, right? That stuff, that stuff hurts us, right? Um, and, I, and I don't mean hurts us uh, emotionally. I mean, it hurts our, our businesses, right? So. hundred um, percent. Yeah. Go so. Ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So I think, um, I think I, this is, this is something deep that I, you know, I really have to, to work on in terms of people pleasing this the, the idea of authenticity and the need to hide that Absolutely. and not upsetting people and uh yeah i agree with you this is a, a multi-layered thing as oftentimes these things are and again i just want to applaud you for for diving into it and just stress that again like you know we can open up the door in conversations like this but really to dive into all of it uh it's going to take some time right as as you're aware of so um if you can then just close us off with, you know, what you came, well, in your words, right? Like what you came into this conversation with as far as your business problem, and then what were the aha moments or realizations uh, in your words as a result of the conversation? Yeah. Um, so where I came into it, you know, I, I have listened to a number of your podcasts and, and really enjoy uh, listening to them and really learned a lot from from what uh, what you're doing. So um, I was very happy to to get a chance to come on. Um, in terms of what I'm taking away from it, um, it, it's that I've got a pretty big challenge um, in terms of standing in my own way. You know, um, with this fear of being authentic, with people pleasing with not wanting people to be upset. Um, yeah, I have a lot of work ahead, I would say is what I took away from it. That's fair. Um, yeah, and listen, that that's okay. That That's the, the work. And I'll invite you to consider that maybe it doesn't have to be as arduous as uh, it, it initially seems, right? It's a lot, but doesn't necessarily mean it's too much, right? So I'm just going to kind of 
leave that there for it to linger. Um, but yeah, in that case, we just close us off and let everybody know uh, where to find you, who's the best person to find you. The floor is yours for that. Yeah, sure. So um, I do want to say one more thing too. And sure. that's that like uh, in response to the, uh, what you said about the um, sort of the weight of this stuff, right? Um, you're right. Like I, like in my head, um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the, what, what is possible after, after I resolve these things, right? Um, what type of work I can find, what value I'll find in that work, um, if I can be my authentic self. Um, so that's, yeah, that's huge. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's probably the, the most important I don't want to say the most important takeaway, but that's definitely an important takeaway as well. So I'm in Pittsburgh. If you need a photographer for events, for portraits, uh, weddings, um, you know, uh, by all means, find me at uh, wdophoto.com. Um, those are my initials, uh, wdophoto.com. Um, I do teach uh, as well. I teach virtually and in person. So no matter where you are in the world, if you are looking to learn more about photography, whether that's just a basic intro class or something more specialized like macro photography or something like that. So nature photography. Hit me up there as well. WDFphoto.com. Same thing with all the socials. So. Awesome. Well, Don, thank you very much for uh, coming on and sharing everything with us. And for everybody else listening, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much.